When most people think about Kuala Lumpur, they don't exactly think about a bustling hub for business and high-end retail space. Maybe that's precisely what they should be thinking about. This is a city that has always been rather ambitious. They were part of Britain until the 1950s. Once they gained their independence, they hit the ground running and haven't looked back since. This is a city that is determined to make itself known for high-powered business deals all over the world. They've always had a knack for creating architecture capable of getting everyone's attention. After all, who doesn't remember the Petronas Towers, skyscrapers that were once the tallest buildings in the world? Although the towers were dethroned in 2004, that doesn't make them any less spectacular. These days, the city is working on something a little bit different. Please make no mistake about it, they still have every intention of incorporating tall buildings into the mix. They're now focused on more than one or two skyscrapers. Their latest project is truly a city in and of itself, located directly in the heart of Kuala Lumpur. It's being referred to as the city within a city, and it's already underway. By the time it's all said and done, this particular construction project will incorporate tens of thousands of square feet of high-end office space, luxury residences, hotels that rival five-star facilities anywhere in the world, and the types of shops that are naturally attracted to these areas. In short, it will be a high-end location perfect for doing business, relaxing, shopping, eating out, or virtually anything else that tickles your fancy. It's also a development that will cost about 9 billion US dollars. That might sound like a staggering amount of money, but the Malaysian government is more than prepared to spend money to make money. They have long understood that to make things better, you have to initiate change. Unfortunately, change only sometimes comes with some hurdles along the way. More often than not, one of those hurdles involves spending more money to make improvements. When you're talking about the principal government, the goal is to get other people to come into the area to live and work. You need to have something that's appealing to them to get very far. That is precisely why the government has spent decades working on projects designed to bring in more business. They've always thought of developing a robust economy that could stand on its own two feet. It has to do with being under the rule of another country for years and years. Knowing what it's like to have someone else making all their choices for them, they've made a decision early on that they were going to do whatever was necessary to be able to stand firm in the financial sector, mainly so they would never have someone else telling them how to live again. A quick reminder before we continue our discussion on this topic. If you've enjoyed this video so far, consider subscribing as we frequently upload such informative and educational videos. Let's continue. Even when other countries' economies were tanking, Malaysia stood firm. They've had an economy that could grow at a surprisingly healthy rate. At the moment, it's not quite stout as it once was, but you have to consider that many other economies of significant players in the business world are taking a real hit right now. Think about the UK and the US. Both of these areas are seeing inflation rise at historic rates. People need help affording places to live. A trip to the local grocery store for a week's worth of supplies has become something that is not altogether different from what paying rent was just a few years ago. As a result, the economy in both areas suffers tremendously. All the while, Malaysia is still growing. That growth may not be as fast as it once was, but at least they don't have people roaming the streets hungry and unable to afford a place to live, nor do they have their residents sitting in the dark because they can't afford to keep the lights on. That should say a lot about the state of things in Kuala Lumpur versus the rest of the world. Exactly how have the people in Malaysia managed to accomplish such things when other countries that were once considered superpowers are nothing but a shell of their former selves? It all comes down to the fact that Malaysia decided early on that they were going to become a hub for trade that would support its local economy. They've worked on that goal since the first day they gained independence and never stopped making it a primary focus. As a result, they've got significant players, such as Prudential, that are moving into this new city. The biggest banks in the world are well aware that Malaysia arrived a long time ago. More importantly, they and others are also keenly aware that this country will keep boosting its economy as opposed to absolutely killing it. That benefits businesses, the people who live and work there, and the government itself. It's remarkable when you stop and think about it, in the 1800s, Kuala Lumpur was not the city it is today, not by a long shot. It was a tiny town that was focused almost entirely on mining. If you've ever spent time in a mining town, regardless of the location, you know that they're not the best places to be. They're usually dirty, there isn't much to do there, and they tend to shutter the doors on everything that exists overnight, leaving the entire mess in their wake. 
Most towns that were once known for mining are now nothing more than ghost towns. Kuala Lumpur is the exception. Even before the Petronas Towers came into existence, this country was known for open markets that were second to none, all part of a relatively vibrant economy. Sure, it's an ancient city with everything within its borders that you would expect of a city this old. You can explore ancient ruins and visit old temples all day long, but you can also experience something that many ancient towns don't offer. That includes an entire complex like this one that incorporates only the most modern designs, complete with technology just now beginning to emerge. That's one of the things that residents of Kuala Lumpur love so much. They do have the best of both worlds. They don't have to give up their heritage to enjoy intensely everyday things. They don't feel like they have to throw away modern conveniences that make them competitive with the rest of the world to honor their heritage. Unlike so many other places, they've struck a balance which works. By the time it's all said and done, this complex will have fewer than 30 buildings within its borders. While it will most definitely be a part of Kuala Lumpur, it's massive. It incorporates so many types of structures that people think of it as a city that sits directly in the heart of another city. It's possible to live, work, and enjoy your life within the borders of this new development without ever wanting a single thing. In case you're curious, there are plans to develop several cultural centers within this new development, one affectionately known as the TRX Exchange. The 2.2 million square meter development will include places to learn about Malaysian culture and virtually everything else. There's also a distinct focus on reducing the country's carbon footprint. That's accomplished by using new construction that requires less energy to cool the buildings during the day's heat. They're even incorporating a massive park equivalent to several city blocks in size. Think New York City's Central Park. The big difference is that this particular park will be located on the rooftop of one of the new buildings. Malaysia may not have a lot of space to build parks like this one, but they certainly don't lack ingenuity. Not only is this area guaranteed to draw people to it, but it will also help the entire city become more environmentally friendly, one of their main goals. When is all this magic set to be completed? Currently, it's on track to be fully completed and up and running by 2025. Considering that it's already late 2022, that's an ambitious deadline. However, it's one that the Malaysian people are more than capable of meeting. They'll probably finish it early and show the rest of the world how it's done, just like they've been doing all along. What's your opinion on Malaysia's $9 billion mega project? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to Made Well Finder so that we can keep making such amazing videos for you. Thanks for watching.